Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at the most important display properties out there in CSS. If you wanna create layouts, you're gonna need this. Hit the display none to my hair as well. Let's go. Alrighty, welcome to CSS where dreams are made and tears are cascading down the sheet. So let's start off with the most popular display called display block. So we have a H1, H2, a bunch of elements here. And as you can see by default, their behavior is to just drop down to a new line. And that's exactly what display block does. It just takes up all the available space horizontally for you. And then any other element that you add is gonna drop down in a new line. So we have a H1 here. If I add a class of box one, I just added the background color to that, as you can see, just takes up the whole available space. Now we can do padding on it and stuff like that. So that's gonna work fine. So if we drop a padding, a margin, as you can see, everything works as we intended. Now we also have the ability to change the width on it and set an explicit height if we want. So I'll do 20 VH. Let's have a look at our first head scratcher in CSS. I remember when I was learning, I thought it was CSS was being buggy for some reason, but it's not. I was just being stupid. So let me just show you this. Uh, we have an anchor tag here, right? and let's say you want to style it up. So you go here and then you add your favorite color, a little purple, and then we'll do a font, weight, the bold, and yeah, everything works fine until you start adding a padding because you want to separate it from the list item, but it doesn't work. Why not? Well, an anchor tag is not displayed block by default. It's displayed in line as well as a span that's also displayed in line, a, an image, a strong tag, and a small tag as well. And what that means is that they only are gonna take up the available space necessary to render out the text here. So if I add two more, as you can see, they're just gonna come one next to each other. Uh, they do apply horizontal spacing, but they do not apply vertical spacing. And you also cannot add a specific height or width to it. So if I do a height of 20 rem, see nothing happens. If I do a width of 20 rem, nothing happens again. That's because I misspelled it, width. There you go, see nothing happens. Now, if I add a padding, even though you're gonna see the padding here, you can still see the padding being applied vertically. It's just the other elements are gonna just gonna ignore it. Uh, feels like high school again. So if we do a background of light blue, as you can see, it's still there. So essentially display in line behaves like words in the sentence. And that's kind of what we use it mostly for is to style up pieces of text within an element. So for example, in this paragraph, right? Let's say I wanna maybe make a word here, bold and red. So you could add a span, which is in line. So if I add some styling to it, like red with a font weight and a padding and hit save, as you can see, it applies it on that specific text. Let me give you another head scratcher here. I'll add two buttons to the screen. And as you can see, I apply the same styles to it. So the anchor tags and the button have the same styles, but check this out now. If I add a margin of one rem to it, it actually gives us the vertical space. So what's going on here? Because we know with inline, you're not, you cannot get that vertical space. Well, a button is displayed inline block. And all that means is the annoying things about inline, like adding width, height, padding, margin, and stuff like that is gonna work. Not only that, but you can also change other elements to behave like display inline block if you want. So I could head here to perhaps these lists here. So I'll grab the LI and I'll just do a display of inline block and hit save. As you can see, they're gonna come on the same line. I can add some padding here of one rem if I want to and separate it. Let's talk about display none and two other properties that look very similar, but do completely different things. So by default, if I add a display block on this LI, it's just gonna remove it from the DOM and any other elements or your whole layout is gonna shift according to that change. So if this gets popped off from here, our paragraph essentially is gonna adjust and move up. So when I hit save, as you can see, we removed it completely from our DOM. Cool. Now, this is great. However, if you want to animate this, it's not going to work because display none is essentially like an on and off switch. You can either go from display none to display block. There's no like in-between state like opacity. So let's have a look at that. 
If I go opacity of 0.5, as you can see, the element starts fading out. Now, I still can select the element. It's still there, and the layout is not gonna collapse, right? So if this goes down to zero, it's still gonna keep the space there. I can still technically select it as well. It's essentially like having white text on a white background. The good thing about this is that we can animate this because the, we can animate the properties between the zero all the way to one, right? So you can gradually start animating this into view. So that's fantastic. The downside of opacity zero is that the element can still be selected. So that's where you would switch over to something like a visibility of hidden. And if I hit save on that, as you can see, that's gonna act exactly like opacity zero. However, this time I cannot grab the elements at all. Let's have a look at the most popular, the OG, the GOAT, the best display out there, Display Flex. Yeah, boy, let's get it. I love Display Flex. It's, it's my favorite way to make layouts just because it's so simple and it's one directional, which is fantastic because it, it's not hard to think about like grid. So I have a UL here with three LIs. And if I add a Display Flex on top of this, what's going to happen basically is all the children elements inside the UL are gonna come in one line. Uh, so it's, it acts like all the children elements are displayed in line. But when we add display flex, we gain benefits, we gain other properties that we can now use to position these elements inside this box. So let's say our UL also has maybe a height to it of 10 rem, all right, just to give it some spacing here. We can do justify content and put center here, and that's gonna align all of our list items horizontally we can do flex end as well flex what does it start and then we can also apply space around between or evenly if you want to align your items vertically you can use align items for that so we can do center here or we can do the same flex end or start now display flex can go in two directions it can go either in a row or in a column and that's the behavior we saw here by default it's going to be set in a row so flex direction row like that see nothing happens however i can change this to column to give it kind of like a display block behavior like that all right but now you can see that our justify content is not centered anymore so what's going on be careful when you change the flex direction from row to column these two properties here, justify content and align items, are essentially going to reverse themselves. So by default, if I take this off and change this to row, as you can see, justify content puts the items in the center for us. However, if I change this to column, it won't anymore. It will adjust this vertically now. So if this would be a bit bigger, like 20. RAM, as you can see, it does it vertically. So now if I want to adjust it horizontally, I would have to switch this over to align items. So please keep that in mind. And also keep in mind when you're working with flex, you don't necessarily even need padding when you want to add spacing in between the elements. So for example, here, I can just add a gap of two RAM to separate these list items from each other. Now, just because I added a line item center to the UL, it doesn't mean that we cannot modify the position of each individual LI. So I grab the first one here and I can just add a line self to flex. And for example, if I just want this to move down here at the bottom for me, like that. Display grid is very similar to Flexbox. The only difference is that it works two dimensionally. So we get to create columns and rows. But with that, like flexibility also comes more complexity, unfortunately. So that's why I'm not too big of a fan using it. But let's let's make an example here. So let's create two columns here. So I'll do grid template columns and we can use one FR. And one FR is gonna take up all the available space essentially. So if I had two of these, it's gonna create two columns for us with the same space. So three, let's do three. And we, we also have access to the repeat function here. So if I don't wanna say one FR, one FR, one FR, I can just do repeat three times one FR. And as you can see, we're gonna get the same result. 
So here I can just jump and customize this any way I want. So let's say I want four columns. And as you can see by default, it's just gonna automatically create more rows for you if there's more elements inside. But you can also customize this if you want. So I can do one FR, one FR, one FR. And as you can see, that creates three rows even though we don't have enough elements in here. One of the best things about CSS Grid is that it just allows you to easily take any element and move it anywhere you want in that grid. So for example, the fire here that we have, let's say I want to move it here or maybe at the bottom here. So we can use that, we can use grid row and grid column to position these elements. So if I do grid row from one to two, nothing's gonna happen. However, if I do from two to three, as you can see, it moves in the middle. So how does that work? Well, if I highlight the grid here, you're gonna see those purple lines. So essentially you start counting from one. Doesn't matter if it's column or row. So for row, you'd go from here. One to two, two to three, and three to four. For, for column, you do from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five. Okay, so if I wanna position this at the end here, I can do a three to four. So let's change that from three to four. I hit save, and as you can see, it's at the bottom. So if I wanna move it all the way to the end here, I'll just have to count. So one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and five to six. So I would do a grid column of five to six. So when would I use grid? I'd only use it really when creating complex layouts like this. So imagine these are not pictures, but actual elements on a website. And to actually make this in Flexbox would be quite complicated. You'd need loads of different divs. So this would all be contained in a div. And then you'd probably add display flex to this small section, this small section. Uh, so yeah, it gets complicated. Now there's a couple of other displays out there, but to be fair, I never really used them. You can essentially add display like table, for example, to make an other element behave like a table. <laughs> and you can do that with like, to make it behave like a list as well, or like a table cell or column, etc., etc. So you can do that, but I mean, never came in handy. If you know any tricks for with that, let me know down in the comments below. I'm quite curious. So there you go. Those are CSS display properties. Hope you learned something new. Hope it helps you with your layouts. If you know any other cool tricks that you can do, write it down in the comments. With the glutes tables, I'll delete it. If not, then I'll like it. Okay, until the next one, guys. I'll see you then.